Go ahead, Pastor. Uh, sir, I'm going to ask you to speak um, really as loud as you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how are you employed? I'm um, employed with the uh, Detroit Police Department. Okay. And what do you do there? I uh, work. I'm assigned to the Special Response Team, which is the city's SWAT team. The SWAT team. Yep. Okay. How long have you been a police officer? Uh, for 13 years. And what's your rank right now? Uh, corporal. Corporal. Okay. So I'm not familiar with Detroit Police and their ranking structure. Tell me what that means. So corporal is essentially um, like a would be a field training officer or a, a trainer of other police officers. Um, essentially. Yeah. Okay. And how long have you been assigned to the city of Detroit Special Response Team? Uh, for approximately 10 years. 10 years? Yes, sir. Okay. And where did you work prior to that? I uh, worked on the Eastern District, which is, which is uh, like a constant and crashes. Okay. So would that be um, a patrol officer? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So tell us, Jerry, please, what are some of the responsibilities of a member of the Detroit Police Special Response Team? Um, the Special Response Team serves high risk search warrants, um, usually for homicide suspects uh, or dangerous people, and then we also do barricaded gunmen, so um, get domestic violence and someone barricaded in the house. If they don't want to come out, police officers will call us and we respond to that scene. Okay. So you've had specific training when it comes to executing um, search warrants and arrest warrants? Correct. Okay. So um, how many, we would call this a raid, would that be right? Um, fair? That's, that's fair. Okay. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. Yep. Okay. So how many times have you executed either a search warrant or an arrest warrant? I don't know the number off the top of my head. I mean, give us the ballpark if you can. Probably hundreds. I know what I have 173 barricaded gunmen instances we've I've dealt with. Um, 173 barricaded gunmen alone. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, and then on top of that, the search warrants. We don't. I don't keep track of that off the top of my head, but I would say more than more than 200. Easily. Okay. So you've been doing this for about a decade. Correct. And is this the the routine practice of the Detroit Police Special Response Team? Oh uh, yeah. Now, I want to direct your attention to Friday, December the 3rd, 2021, approximately 11.30 p.m. Okay. Do you recall that date and time? I do. Okay. And did you have occasion to be uh, recalled to 1111 Bellevue in the city of Detroit? Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, got recalled for a search for a wanted fugitive. That was, that was the, recall, the recall we got. So that was the only information I got prior to getting there. Okay. Now, when I... I say recall, what does that mean? Um, so our commander will call our lieutenant who then <coughs> texts our sergeants and they send out a, a text message to our whole team that says come back to the base or respond to this particular address. In, oh. this, in this case it was respond to this <coughs> area um, and once I got there it was given more information at that time. Okay, so I take it 11.30 at night on that Friday night you weren't in the office itself, would that be correct? Yeah, that was at home. Okay, so when you recalled, you're, you're always on call, but you're called to duty? Correct. Okay, so as a member of the special response team, is it fair to say that you're always on call? <coughs> always on call, yeah. Always on call, okay. So approximately what time did you arrive at that location? Um, usually, I'm usually pretty quick. That's roughly 20 minutes from my house, maybe 25 minutes uh, before I got to that scene. Okay, so if you got the message about 11.30, would it be fair to say you arrived before midnight? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, what type, what type of building is at that location? Um, there's a large, I want to call it maybe an industrial type building. Um, if I showed you some pictures, would that help? Yeah. So we have people's 348, 349, and 351 to this witness. 348, 351. Three, 349, and 351. We have no we have no objection to those. All right, three forty eight. So three forty eight. Three forty nine. And three fifty one. Three fifty one, not three fifty. Correct. That's who this one is. Uh, sir, on the screen in front of you, can you see the People's Admit Exhibit three hundred and forty eight? I do. Okay. And what am I looking at in this photograph here? It looks like an industrial building to me. Okay, so this is the address 1111 Bellevue in the city of Detroit? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a yes? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sorry. And this is... Oh, I'm sorry. This is People's Admitted 349. This is the same building? Uh, it looks to be, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, and this is People's 351. Again, photograph of 1111 Bellevue? Yes, sir. Okay. 
So when you arrive, sir, tell me what you saw, your initial observations. Uh, there's a ton of police cars initially. Um, at, with this particular incident, um, there wasn't anywhere to set up on like a barricade government would be, so I kind of waited until we had more officers that show up to the scene. Um, prior to making entry into the building. Okay. Um, so let me stop you right there. You said a ton of officers are already in scene. Was that your team members or were no, other officers? There's other people. Um, so there was, um, I couldn't tell you what agencies or what, what units were there, but it was more than just SRT. Okay, so it was more than Detroit Police Special Response. <clears throat> was it also, excuse me, more than just Detroit Police officers as well? To be honest, I couldn't tell you. I didn't see any other, any other city cars, but there was a lot of Detroit Police cars and then as we started showing up. Um, prior, this was prior to making entry. Once we were in the building, there was <coughs> multiple agencies, multiple uh, tactical teams, or at least one other tactical team that we ended up running into while we were clearing. Okay, so sir, tell me, um, you arrived a little before midnight, you said, yes. and at that point, were your team members already there? No, nope, I was the first one there. Um, I talked with my, I believe it was the commander or a lieutenant that was on the scene already. He kind of gave me a rundown of what was going on. And we kind of, for, kind of formed a plan and waited for other guys to get there before he made entry. To the okay. To the so you were recalled from your home, you said? Correct. Okay. Were you wearing the uniform you're wearing today? Uh, no, sir. <coughs> Tell me what you were wearing. Uh, it's a, a, a essentially an unmarked um, uniform, but it's a black tactical shirt, which allows me to apply patches to each, each shoulder. So I'm able to identify myself as a Detroit police officer. Um, then I have a heavy vest on that says police across the chest. Heavy vest is what? Uh, it's a bulletproof ballistic vest. Uh, okay. With you know heavy plates on the inside for, for you know protection from firearms. Uh, helmet, usually a mask, but this time it's pretty cold, so I usually do wear a, a, a face covering. Um, also, I have my badge on my my rig that I use for my gun belt, and that's essentially it. everything's all black though, except for the police and white lettering across. Okay, the and that's the standard uniform of the Detroit Police Special Response Team. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so once you met with the other team members and a plan was um, organized, what happened next? Uh, we actually made entry into this um, building where we, there was also there was a, a ton of officers there already. Um, Give us an idea of how many. On the main floor, when we first went through that through the front door, there was I'd say roughly twenty people in there, um, just in the initial spot. Just in the main entryway. Yeah. Okay. Um, and. There were officers that were dressed kind of plain clothes. Um, some guys that maybe they're dressed like DFAT, which would be like jeans and a shirt, but a vest that uh, identifies them as police. What's DFAT? Uh, the Detroit uh, Fugitive Apprehension Team. Okay. Um, and there was there was other like I said other officers there that looked to be like a tactical team. Okay. So you weren't the only special response team on the scene. Uh, I wouldn't say no. All right. And we've already heard testimony that this building had three floors to it. Is that accurate? Yep. Okay. So tell us, sir, what, what is the first thing that the Detroit Police Department Special Response Team did? So um, after making entry, um, we started searching the main floor kind of slowly. Uh, I know we did breach one or two doors on the initial entry. Um, there was a room right to our, left, our right when we went into the door. We had to breach a double door. We breached that one. And we Let me stop you right there. Breach, what does that mean? We used a, uh, a ram, and a manual breach is you're breaking the door open, you're defeating the locking mechanism. Okay. Um, and that's what we did. So that was on the first um, floor of this building? Yes, sir. Okay, so you, who, who used the ram? Was it you or another member? It was another member. Okay. So describe to us what happens when you use the breach to defeat a locking mechanism. Uh, you're essentially banging a 35 pound metal ram against the door uh, until it opens. Until it opens? Okay. Yeah. And were you able to breach the door in this particular instance? Uh, yes. Okay. And what was found in that room, if you recall? Uh, nothing. It actually ended up wrapping around to another door. Um, we ended up going out that door and back into the hallway that we were in, but we had cleared that, that room and the conjoining room before we went back out to the hallway. Okay. Now, at some point, was Detroit Police Department's special response team coordinating with other tactical units on scene? I believe my commander was, or my sergeant. I was not personally. That's fair. But I couldn't, I, I, would, I would assume they were. Uh, okay. So just walk us through then where your particular team went that evening. Uh, we started on the main floor, and we were given information that the 
two one and fugitives that went up to the second floor and never returned back downstairs. Um, so that kind of forced our, our way, that kind of pushed us to the second floor. Were there officers on the second floor already? Correct, and that, yes, and that's, uh, that's when we ran into that second tactical team who said they had cleared the second floor, they cleared all the open doors. Okay. Um, so we ended up clearing the, the closed doors as much as we could. At some point somebody gained access to a, a ring of keys and we were opening the, the closed door, locked doors with the keys. Okay. Now at this point in time, when the tactical units were inside the building, were there other police officers on the exterior of the building? Yeah, there was police I would, I would assume. Uh, I'd be guessing at this point, but I would bet there was police on the perimeter of the building. Yes. Okay. And you said police everywhere? Yeah. Were there um, emergency lights <coughs> activated in vehicles? I, I'm not 100% sure with that. But. That's okay. Um, was it just the tackle units then inside the building at this point? There was a canine officer as well. Canine as well. We utilized canine uh, officers on a canine officer on the second floor, who checked each door prior to us opening it with the dog, and we never obviously didn't get any hits from the dog on the second floor. Okay. And to your knowledge, were there other teams on the third floor at this point in time as well? I'm not 100 percent sure. That's fair. Um, where did you go after the second floor was cleared? If I'm not mistaken, I think we went up to the third floor. Um, <coughs> For returning back down to the main floor. Okay, so at some point in time, you and your team returned back to the first floor. Correct. Okay, and why did you do that? Um, at some point, my one of my supervisors was given information that the room, these, um, the wine fugitive we're supposed to be in, was on the first floor. Um, at some point, someone asked if it had already been cleared, and which they said no. So. Uh, Okay, so we went back down directly to that room. Okay, and you were given a set of keys for that? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, do you recall who gave you the keys? Uh, I, I never got the keys. Uh, somebody opened the door for me. I was just number one into the door, into that room. Okay, so tell me, that suite in particular, um, if I told you it was suite 130, would that sound right to you? Yeah. Okay. Um, that suite in particular, what's the proximity from that location to the location where you used the 35 pound ram to kick in the door? It, it's on the same floor on the same side of the building. Um, if I guess, maybe 10 or 15 feet away. Okay. Like that. All right. Now, at this point in time, were the Detroit Police Department special response team equipped with body worn cameras? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And to your knowledge, was yours activated that night? Uh, yes, sir. Now, how long would you say that your particular team was on this location from the time you arrived to the time that you entered Suite 130? I guess maybe an hour, hour and a half. Okay. Two hours tops, but I'd be guessing at this point. That's okay. Little, little. Um, just an estimate. That's all we're asking. Yep. Um, and during that hour, hour and a half, up to two hours, were other tactical teams also clearing other rooms? Uh, yes, sir. Now your body worn camera would have a, a date and time stamp on it, if you know. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. This is going to be people's 347. I don't believe there's an objection. No, there's not. We stipulate to the admission. 347 is admitted. December the 4th, 2021, at 1.33 in the morning. Okay. Is that, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And this is camera from your um, body worn camera? Yes, sir. Okay, tell us quickly, where is that camera affixed on your uniform? Um, I have it affixed uh, to the right side of my chest, just underneath uh, my uh, magazine carriers. Okay. There's, I have a lot of stuff here, but it's just a space pretty much right underneath my right arm. We see a lot of stuff here. We're talking about the tactical vest you described? Yes, sir. Okay.
response team's function to actually search for evidentiary items just for weapons? Correct. Uh, at this point, it's more of a, a safety search. Before we let anybody into this room, we're going to make sure that we know where weapons are and make sure they're secure before and anybody else coming from the public or not from our team is in that room. Okay. And there were no weapons located in this search? I did not find any weapons. Okay. No. But an actual search of this location will be conducted by members of the um, uh, crime scene unit. Would that be right? Sure. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. 